Today, I'm flying across the world, spending some 24 hours on board a plane. Why, you ask? To go to Tokyo, Japan. Well, it's more than that. On my way, I'll be flying ANA's $10,000 first class, have a shower in Tokyo, then hop on board their business class back home. 12,000 miles, all in 24 hours. Well, uh, 12 minutes for YouTube. I'll be starting at London's Heathrow, where my first issue arises. How to explain this itinerary to the rightly very confused check-in staff. Computer says no. Nah. Thankfully, after a few phone calls and around an hour later, the agent had the appropriate approvals to issue my tickets and I'm through. I must say, it seems strange to be flying to Asia today, given it's been off limit for most of us for the last 18 months. I mean, I guess it kind of still is. Let's get down that jet bridge then and start the clock on what will be 24 hours in the sky. Thankfully, this first segment is in one of the world's best first-class products. Without any further ado, let's stow my luggage and get settled in for this first 12-hour jaunt. Priorities then, I'm served pre-departure champagne. What champagne, you ask? Well, it's Krug, of course. It's not long before the safety video is screened and we begin to push back whilst I take a final swig of champagne. I make it time to get comfy. So let's kick off those, well, not Tim's, and put the provided slippers on. My shoes can be stowed under the ottoman in front of me. We swiftly taxi out to the runway, all ready to depart into a beautifully and for once sunny UK evening. Next stop, Japan, some 6,000 miles away. I think the first thing I want to share with you is the insane size of this TV in my suite. It's quite unlike anything I've come across before, and aside from having in-flight cameras and entertainment, I've since found out you can even connect your computer to it and use it like a monitor. Okay, let's crack out the extensive menu. It's an eclectic mix of Western and Japanese food. And being first class, I think you can guess what's coming up given that spoon. An appetizer of caviar, of course. Have you tried this before? Personally, I only really have it on board, but have really grown to love it. Next up, well, it's called Zensai, AKA a selection of morsels. Highlight being the dressed squid and sea urchin. I know this isn't the usual chicken or beef. <laughs> After yet another refreshing swig of Krug, it's on to my next course, the sashimi. It's essentially raw fish, but really fresh, delicate, and very tasty. Turbulence, as always, decided to call join my main course, so sorry for the shaky camera. Introducing grilled yellowtail, served with rice and a delicious miso soup, which is probably going to end up on my lap. To close, I went for the trio of desserts, but perhaps the most special item on the menu is the Hibiki 21, an incredibly rare Japanese whiskey, retailing an eye-watering $2,000, if you can even lay your hands on it. Okay, with dinner out of the way, let's change into the provided PJs. To do so, we're going to head to the loo for a review. There are two toilets at the front of the cabin, which were kept immaculate throughout my flight. And yes, there's even a proper Japanese loo on board. Now, I'm in one kilo today, but as the whole cabin is empty, I decided I might as well make two kilo my bedroom tonight. As you can see, it's very inviting, complete with a mattress, plush duvet, and a super soft, fluffy white pillow. Needless to say, I slept very well. One eternity later. I awake about 45 minutes before landing, so it's not long before we begin our descent into Tokyo's Haneda Airport. A quick outfit change later and I'm back in my usual NASA attire. Now all that remains is to belt up and enjoy the landing. It's a very surreal feeling coming into land into a country which you're not allowed into. Landing was smooth enough but there's one more surprise in store as we taxi to our gate. My friend Flight Hacks was on the exact same aircraft coming back from Australia a few weeks ago and left an easter egg. <laughs> Go check out his a and experience after this, linked below. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm personally escorted off the plane by an a and employee, all whilst the other passengers remain on board. Of course, I'm the only one transiting, so I'm led to the transit facility and have my baggage screened. Welcome to a deserted Tokyo Haneda airport, and perhaps the most surreal airport experience of my life. What do I do in an empty airport? Well, explore, I guess. Apparently, this machine can give me travel insurance. Not quite swayed by the offer of travel insurance, I discover the next best thing. I don't really think this is the best idea during COVID, but... Oh. Goodness me, can anyone work that out? 
It's coin operated. Given I don't have any local currency, that's not gonna happen. I did, however, manage to find a shower in the confines of the a and Suites lounge. It's literally the only sanctuary within the airport open at present. So I'm very glad to be able to freshen up. You honestly cannot be having a shower just before a long haul flight, especially if like me, I've just got off another flight as well. Anyway, with that said, let's go pick up my stuff and get on board for our next flight. And now for a quick word from today's video sponsor, Honey. These days, it feels like online shopping is the only shopping we really do. And that's where Honey comes in. Honey is a free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and automatically tests them when you're checking out. So you're probably thinking, Will, how does this work? Well, you can get Honey for free on your computer in two easy clicks. Then when you're checking out, Honey pops up and all you have to do is click apply coupon. In just a few seconds, Honey searches for coupons that you can use for this website. If Honey finds a working code, boom, you can see the price drop. You can get Honey in two clicks on joinhoney.com forward slash Trek Trendy. It's simple, if you own a computer, Honey should be on it. It's free and works with whatever browser you're using. Get Honey today for free by going to joinhoney.com forward slash Trek Trendy. Thank you Honey for sponsoring today's video. Oh, I seem a bit flustered here. It's because I misjudged the timings and took too long in the shower. Oops. Literally only a two minute walk, thankfully. Uh, to be fair, it's probably best to overcompensate with times like this, you know, to make sure you get back, you get on board at the right time. But anyway, here we go. 107B, 107A over to Frankfurt. Let's go get on board. Okay, Thank you. So I've been trying to work out why it says boarding group four on my ticket. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's get on board. Of course, on board the 787 over to Frankfurt. I think the flight time will be roughly around 11 hours. I should hopefully be able to get some sleep as well. Talking of which, we're well overdue a flight time update as we get on board. I think this is going to work out perfectly, given we're around 45 minutes away from takeoff. Okay, so welcome to the 787 Dreamliner and ANA's older 121 business class, operated on most of their long haul fleet at present. Of course, it's quite the step down from my last first class flight, but that would be the case for most business class products. This evening, I've selected 10 Alpha for this overnight back to Europe. It's actually very similar to Emirates' A380 seat, albeit without the faux walnut and gold. The seat is spacious enough with ample cubby space, although a little tight getting in. Immediately in front of me is the HD IFE screen, complete with a beautiful a and sky map of our route this evening. For pre-departures, I could have had some Duvel Leroy champagne, but instead opted for water. Boring, I know. I feel I need to do everything in my power not to be horribly jet-lagged after this crazy adventure. It's not long before we begin to push back off stand, so I get my seatbelt firmly secured whilst the safety video screens. After a short taxi, we're at the runway and off into the Tokyo evening, bound for Europe. About 20 minutes later, we level out, and I think it's time to get those shoes off and chuck the provided slippers on. a and do not provide PJs in business, but thankfully I've got my first class ones. So let's head to the loo and get changed. As with first, the loo is spotless, but there is not really anything premium provided in terms of soap or lotion, which is a shame. Time to freshen up and get ready for sleep. Heading back to my seat, I'm reminded I'm no longer in first class. Of course, I have to make my own bed. First world issues, hey? <laughs> I'm just joking before the haters grab their pitchforks and head to the comments. No mattress pad is provided here, so I use one of the spare light duvets as a topper. I really dislike sleeping directly on the seat if I can help it. And voila, a bed. I'm pretty tired at this point, so I'll catch you guys for meal service in the morning. I awake to the smell of brekkie, admittedly not always a welcome smell on a plane. Let's take a look what we have on offer. This is actually quite the selection, with both Western and Japanese options, which I'm pretty impressed with. Let's get that tray table folded out and crack on. Now, blame my unsophisticated British palate, but I went for the Western breakfast. I just don't really fancy tilefish first thing in the morning. The eggs benedict was pretty tasty, just not really like what we get back at home. Not an issue though. What was an issue was the state of the croissant, which, with the exception of Qatar, I find them pretty much all to be awful on board. 
Time for breakfast dessert. Yep, let's normalize this. Introducing this citron tart. It was absolutely delicious and clearly created specifically by Pierre Hermé for ANA. To continue my temporary self ban on booze, I washed this all down with a Perrier sparkling water. All in all, a half decent breakfast. Right with food service out the way, let's turn the bed back into a seat. Given that we're not far from Frankfurt now, I've magically changed clothes over the power of the edit. And just like that, it's time to finally land back in Europe. Fun fact by the way, I'm actually part German. Well guys, welcome to Germany. Oh, so, <laughs> I know I made it clear at the beginning of the video, but this is now... Ah, uh, of course, the timer. Would you look at that? 24 hours complete. So yes, overall it was a very good flight. You have to remember that the 787 is not going to be as good as their new 777 product, which is called The Room, which you may have seen already on the channel. Anyway, let me know what you thought in the comments below. And now it's time for me to go and have a bit of rest because I have to say I am quite tired. If you want a more in-depth review of a and First, I have a fully comprehensive review on my channel. This was more of a challenge type video to bring you guys along on my most ambitious trip of 2021. Thanks once again for watching and I'll catch you all again next week.